Welcome to Nursing Prep. Push yourself in nursing preparation with smart way. Practice this quiz on www.thestudyblog.com. Fundamentals of Nursing In which step of the nursing process would the nurse ask a patient if the medication she administered relieved his pain? Option A. Assessment Option B. Analysis Option C. Planning Option D. Evaluation Right answer is Option D. Evaluation In the evaluation step of the nursing process, the nurse must decide whether the patient has achieved the expected outcome that was identified in the planning phase. All of the following are good sources of vitamin A except Option A. White potatoes Option B. Carrots Option C. Apricots Option D. Egg yolks Right answer is Option A. White potatoes The main sources of vitamin A are yellow and green vegetables, such as carrots, sweet potatoes, squash, spinach, collard greens, broccoli, and cabbage, and yellow fruits, such as apricots, and cantaloupe. Animal sources include liver, kidneys, cream, butter, and egg yolks. Which of the following is a primary nursing intervention necessary for all patients with a Foley catheter in place? Option A. Maintain the drainage tubing and collection bag level with the patient's bladder. Option B. Irrigate the patient with 1% neosporin solution 3 times a daily. Option C. Clamp the catheter for 1 hour every 4 hours to maintain the bladder's elasticity. Option D. Maintain the drainage tubing and collection bag below bladder level to facilitate drainage by gravity. Right answer is Option D. Maintain the drainage tubing and collection bag below bladder level to facilitate drainage by gravity. Maintaining the drainage tubing and collection bag level with the patient's bladder could result in reflux of urine into the kidney. Irrigating the bladder with neosporin and clamping the catheter for one hour every four hours must be prescribed by a physician. The ELISA test is used to Option A. Screen blood donors for antibodies to human immunodeficiency virus, HIV. Option B. Test blood to be used for transfusion for HIV antibodies. Option C. Aid in diagnosing a patient with AIDS. Option D. All of the above. Right answer is. Option D. All of the above. The ELISA test of venous blood is used to assess blood and potential blood donors to human immunodeficiency virus, HIV. A positive ELISA test combined with various signs and symptoms helps to diagnose acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, AIDS. The two blood vessels most commonly used for TPN infusion are the Option A. Subclavian and jugular veins Option B. Brachial and subclavian veins Option C. Femoral and subclavian veins Option D. Brachial and femoral veins Right answer is Option A. Subclavian and jugular veins Total parenteral nutrition, TPN, requires the use of a large vessel, such as the subclavian or jugular vein, to ensure rapid dilution of the solution and thereby prevent complications, such as hyperglycemia. The brachial and femoral veins usually are contraindicated because they pose an increased risk of thrombophlebitis. Effective skin disinfection before a surgical procedure includes which of the following methods? Option A. Shaving the site on the day before surgery. Option B. Applying a topical antiseptic to the skin on the evening before surgery. Option C. Having the patient take a tub bath on the morning of surgery. Option D. Having the patient shower with an antiseptic soap on the evening before and the morning of surgery. Right answer is. Option D. Having the patient shower with an antiseptic soap on the evening before and the morning of surgery.
studies have shown that showering with an antiseptic soap before surgery is the most effective method of removing microorganisms from the skin. Shaving the site of the intended surgery might cause breaks in the skin, thereby increasing the risk of infection. However, if indicated, shaving should be done immediately before surgery, not the day before. A topical antiseptic would not remove microorganisms and would be beneficial only after proper cleaning and rinsing. Tub bathing might transfer organisms to another body site rather than rinse them away. When transferring a patient from a bed to a chair, the nurse should use which muscles to avoid back injury? Option A. Abdominal muscles. Option B. Back muscles. Option C. Leg muscles. Option D. Upper arm muscles. Right answer is. Option C. Leg muscles. The leg muscles are the strongest muscles in the body and should bear the greatest stress when lifting. Muscles of the abdomen, back, and upper arms may be easily injured. Thrombophlebitis typically develops in patients with which of the following conditions? Option A. Increases partial thromboplastin time. Option B. Acute pulsus paradoxus. Option C. An impaired or traumatized blood vessel wall. Option D. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. Right answer is. Option C. An impaired or traumatized blood vessel wall. The factors, known as Virchow's triad, collectively predispose a patient to thrombophlebitis, impaired venous return to the heart, blood hypercoagulability, and injury to a blood vessel wall. Increased partial thromboplastin time indicates a prolonged bleeding time during fibrin clot formation, commonly the result of anticoagulant, heparin, therapy, arterial blood disorders, such as pulsus paradoxus, and lung diseases, such as COPD, do not necessarily impede venous return of injured vessel walls. In a recumbent, immobilized patient, lung ventilation can become altered leading to such respiratory complications as Option A. Respiratory acidosis, atelectasis, and hypostatic pneumonia. Option B. Apneustic breathing, atypical pneumonia, and respiratory alkalosis. Option C. Chain stokes respirations and spontaneous pneumothorax. Option D. Cusmol's respirations and hypoventilation. Right answer is. Option A. Respiratory acidosis, atelectasis, and hypostatic pneumonia. Because of restricted respiratory movement, a recumbent, immobilized patient is at particular risk for respiratory acidosis from poor gas exchange, atelectasis from reduced surfactant and accumulated mucus in the bronchioles and hypostatic pneumonia from bacterial growth caused by stasis of mucus secretions. Immobility impairs bladder elimination, resulting in such disorders as Option A. Increased urine acidity and relaxation of the perineal muscles, causing incontinence. Option B. Urine retention, bladder distension, and infection. Option C. Diuresis, natriuresis and decreased urine-specific gravity. Option D. Decreased calcium and phosphate levels in the urine. Right answer is. Option B. Urine retention, bladder distension, and infection. The immobilized patient commonly suffers from urine retention caused by decreased muscle tone in the perineum. This leads to bladder distension and urine stagnation which provide an excellent medium for bacterial growth leading to infection. Immobility also results in more alkaline urine with excessive amounts of calcium, sodium and phosphate, a gradual decrease in urine production, and an increased specific gravity. Thanks for watching. You can also practice this quiz on www.thestudyblog.com link in description box. If you have any doubt ask in comment section and you like our video then do like, comment, share. Subscribe our channel for regular updates.